Hi guys, this is Mrs. Homer, and today we'll be talking about DNA replication. In the last unit, you saw how we opened DNA and made a copy of just one gene into mRNA. But for this unit, we actually need to copy the entire strand of DNA. So we need two sets of DNA. So essentially, we're going to be putting DNA on the copy machine to make an exact replica. Now, this is going to happen in the nucleus because that's where the DNA is located. Remember, it's too important and it's too large to leave the nucleus. So when we replicate DNA, we have to go to the nucleus. So why are we going to do this? And when does this process happen? So we are going to do this because the cells are constantly dividing in your body. And when one cell divides into two cells, you have to have an extra set of DNA to put into the new cell. So check this out. This is one cell. It has its full DNA. We copy the DNA in DNA replication. Now it has an extra set of DNA. And finally, the cell is going to split into two. So now each cell is going to have its own copy of the DNA. And this is important because each cell needs 100% of the DNA in order to function properly. So this is going to happen before the cell divides. So we have this happening. We want the full set of DNA in each new cell. So before a cell divides, we are going to undergo DNA replication. Now, here's a quick overview of what we're about to look at. So first, we're going to open the strand of DNA and pull apart the two strands. We're going to use the left side and the right side of DNA, and we're going to start building new DNA on top of it. So you can see we're going to build up and up on the left and up and up on the right. And then finally, when we're done building the entire strand, we'll have two identical copies of DNA. So let's dive into some of the details. Step one, we're going to unzip and untwist the DNA. So there's an enzyme called helicase that's going to unzip and untwist the DNA. And it does this by breaking hydrogen bonds between the two strands of DNA nucleotide. So we're just pulling those two strands apart with helicase. So just a quick checkpoint question. What type of bonds are getting broken when the DNA gets unzipped? You can see it happening here as the top and the bottom are being pulled apart in DNA. Okay, if you answered hydrogen bonds, then you were correct. So this is the second time we've seen where it's important that hydrogen bonds be weak so that we can break them uh, and do a process that's necessary for the cell. All right, step two. Now we're going to start to rebuild DNA. So we're going to rebuild on the left and we're going to rebuild on the right. And we're just building what's missing. So I've got the left side, well, I need to build the right side. And here I have the right side, well, I need to build the left side. And so I'll build all the way up DNA, I'll keep building until the entire strand has been copied. And so we're essentially using the left side and the right side as templates to build a new strand of DNA. This is going to happen with an enzyme called DNA polymerase. So again, enzymes are so helpful. Helicase opened the DNA. Now DNA polymerase is going to copy the DNA. Now DNA polymerase is pretty cool because it has its own spell check. So it self checks itself as it adds new bases to the DNA. And it might make about a mistake every 100,000 nucleotides, but it catches a lot of those. And so it doesn't make many mistakes when it's copying DNA. And we know from the last unit that when a mistake occurs, it's a mutation. And sometimes that can be bad uh, in terms of what that cell needs to do if there's a mistake in its DNA. And we'll look more at that in this unit. All right, so we've opened up DNA. We're starting to copy or elongate, adding new bases, building the left side, building the right side. And we're going to do that using base pairing. So from the last unit, this should be pretty simple. We're going to do apples in the tree, cars in the garage. So if this was the side that I, of my parent DNA that was open, if I'm building the new DNA, A is going to go with T. T with A, C with G, T with A, G with C, A with T, 
and G with C. So again, apples in the tree, cars in the garage, because we're building DNA. Step three, we've opened. Step two, we built. Step three, we're going to retwist. So the DNA is going to retwist after it's been built, forming that double helix once again. And that's going to lead to our result. So the result is going to be two completely identical strands of DNA. So take a look at this picture. The left side of A and T, C and G. On the right side, A with T, C with G. And you can see the rest of these are the same as well. And so we have two completely identical copies of DNA. And that means that each cell will have the identical DNA. No one's getting different DNA in, in the cells because we're making more of your cells. They need to be identical. They need to have that same DNA. So each strand will contain one strand that is old. We're going to call that the parent. So that's the purple strand. And one strand that is new, we call that the daughter strand. So that's the red strand here. And so when it's done, we'll have two complete molecules of DNA that are identical to each other. And because we keep part of that old DNA and we just add part that is new, we call this process semi-conservative. We're keeping part old, 50%, one strand, and part new, 50%, or one strand. Each strand has 50% old and 50% new, 50% parent, 50% daughter. And that is semi-conservative, conserving some of the old DNA. Semi-conservative, which is kind of cool if you think about it, because some of the DNA in your body has to have been around for a really long time, maybe since you were born. All right, one quick last recap. DNA replication, step one, we unzip and we unwind using that helicase to break hydrogen bonds. Step two, we rebuild. So we're gonna add uh, nitrogen bases to either side of the DNA. And that's gonna be done by enzymes or DNA polymerase. Step three, we're gonna retwist back into that double helix and our result will be two new strands of DNA. They're gonna be identical to each other. Each strand will be partially old and partially new, a concept known as semi-conservative. And that's all I have for you today, guys. If you have any questions, let me know. Enjoy the rest of your day.